Alrighty, it's time for another sew along and this is for this dress design of mine. It's ME2067 and there's two views. The first view, view A is a strapless view and it's a longer skirt with a ruffle at the bottom. And view B is a shorter dress that hits mid thigh and then you can add an optional strap. Um, I think this is super cute. It would be fun for like Valentine's Day or just going out or a wedding. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here's the instructions. I'm going to be sewing view B. Um, the only difference is it doesn't have this lower ruffle attached. And then I also am going to add the straps. So here are the pattern pieces. The only pieces we're not going to cut out for view B are the front and lower ruffle. So that's piece 15 and 16. And all right, let's get started. I'm going to cut out all my pieces and then I will be right back. Okay, so the pieces we aren't using for view B are 13 and 14 and 15 and 16. So it's the skirt front and skirt back and the front ruffle and the lower ruffle. Okay, first step is to attach the inner facing. Um, the inner facing is gonna be on all the bodice pieces and the facings. And so I will just go iron that on and then we will be on to step two. Okay, so next I'm gonna do step two and step three. So you're gonna stay stitched just right here where it's illustrated um on the front bodice and then next we're going to sew the front bodice to the side fronts and we're going to sew from top to bottom and then we're going to you can clip the corners or the curve to make it um lay flatter so i'll go sew stay stitch and then sew the front and the sides together and i'll be right back okay so this is the front piece these are the side fronts and we're just gonna after you stay stitch right here we'll pin this onto here and then this one onto this side right sides together and then um we'll sew it at 5 8 inch seam allowance the whole thing is sewed at 5 8 8 inch seam allowance unless i say otherwise all right so i'll go sew the sides and be right back Okay, so I've um, sewed the sides, the side fronts to the center front, and now we're gonna press the seam allowance towards the center front. So we'll press the seam allowances in. And so I will go press that, and then I will be right back. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my bodice back and bodice side back, and then we're gonna stitch them together. Um, with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and I will do that and be right back. Okay, so I have the bodice back and the bodice side back and I'm gonna put them right sides together and stitch it at 5 8 inch seam allowance. I'm gonna do that for both sides and then I will be right back. Okay, so now that I've stitched the side back and center back together, I'm gonna go press the seam open and I'll do that on both pieces, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, now that I've pressed the seams open on both back pieces, um, we're gonna stitch the front bodice and the back bodice together at the side seams. And I will go do that and then be right back. Okay, so I have stitched the back bodice onto the front bodice, and now I'm gonna go press the seams. So let me turn it to the inside. So the side seam under the armhole, I'm gonna press that towards the back on both pieces. So press it towards the back and then I will be right back. Okay, so now moving on to step six, we're gonna work on the ruffle that goes over the arm. Um, so we're gonna press it under three fourths inch and then we're gonna press the raw edge under again, one fourth inch. So you can see in this illustration, it's. Um, the raw edge is going to be sewn under it. So it'll basically be double folded. And so we'll do that and then we're going to stitch it close to the folded edge. So I will go, I will get the ruffle piece and show you what we're going to do. 
Okay, so here's the armhole ruffle. We have two. So I'll just start with one. We're gonna fold the upper edge over to the wrong side of the fabric at three fourths inch and we're gonna press it. And then we're gonna fold the raw edge raw edge under again one fourth inch so it's fully enclosed and then we're going to stitch along we're going to stitch right along the folded edge so i'll go press this over three fourths inch and then press it under again one fourth inch and i'll be right back okay so i pressed it under three fourths inch and then a quarter each inch under again and now I'm going to go stitch along this folded edge and I'll do that and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay so now that I've sewn this down close to the folded edge, okay so now grab the elastic guide and we're going to cut an elastic this length. Um, I'm going to cut mine a little shorter because it was just a little bit long on me. I have narrow shoulders um, but definitely cut up your size and then you can test it out and see if you need to tighten it but i'll cut two pieces of elastic um and then also i did this for both armhole pieces i sewed down right along the folded edge and i will cut a piece of elastic and then we're going to thread it through this channel okay so so to feed the elastic through the channel i'm gonna use a safety pin and I'll just feed it through. Now that I'm to the end, I'm going to pin it because too many times I've pulled it through and had to start over. So make sure you pin it. And then just guide it through the rest. Okay, so I've got it to the end. I'm going to pin this. Pin this side. And then I'm just going to go sew it um, down on both ends so that it doesn't come undone. And then I will repeat it for the other side. Actually, I'll do that right now and then I'll go sew both of these and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now that we've um, attached the elastic to the arm pieces, I have both pieces and we're going to attach it to the front piece. And okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to attach the front piece to the arm and then also the back piece. So you're going to pin it right sides together. And then we will go sew that at 5 8 inch. And so this is the other, so we've attached it to one side. I'm also going to pin the other side, right sides together. Okay, so we'll go attach this. Okay, so I'll go sew both of the armhole ruffles to the edge, to the side of the front ruffle. So I'll sew it on both sides at 5 8 inch, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I've attached both arm ruffles to the center ruffle, and then to the arm ruffle, we're going to attach the back ruffle to each side, so on the ends. 
Okay, so now I've sewn the entire ruffle. We're gonna do a narrow hem at the bottom. So you're gonna fold it under one fourth and then fold it up again. Okay, so I have done the narrow hem on the bottom of the ruffle. I just folded it up, folded it up again and stitched it down. And then I attached the front ruffle and the back ruffles to the arm, to the arm ruffles. So the order that you'll have it, because it's kind of a long piece, you'll have a back piece, then an arm ruffle that has the elastic, a front piece, which is the longest piece, and I've gathered this, and then an arm piece, and then a back piece. So next you're going to do two rows of basting stitches. So I did mine at a stitch length of 4.5. And I did two rows. Let's see, I don't know if you can see that. Wait, let me turn this light on. There we go. Okay, so I did two rows of stitching. And then I just gathered it. So you're going to gather the back piece, the front piece, and then the back piece. Um, so I will go put two rows of basting onto this last back piece, gather it, and then I'll show you how we're going to attach it to the top. Okay, I've sewn, let's see if we can get that to focus, the two rows of basting stitches, and now I'm going to grab the two top threads and just gather it. One thing I actually forgot to do is the end of the ruffle, we're going to do a narrow hem. So you're going to do it just like you did on the bottom. We're going to fold it over twice and stitch it down. So I will go finish both edges of the back ruffle and you're going to fold it towards the wrong side of the fabric. And then I'll be right back and we'll attach the ruffle to the bodice. Okay, so I did the narrow hem on the back of the ruffle. Now we're going to attach the ruffle to the top of the bodice with both pieces right sides up. So the bodice will go to the wrong side of the ruffle. And here's what... So you're going to leave 5 8 inch out and you're going to match the dots. Um, and you're not going to sew it where the underarm is. You're just going to sew it here. And I believe this is match the dot dots or markings, but I believe that this is five eighths inch and this is five eighths inch. And so, and then you'll match the front and then all the way around. Just don't sew where the armhole is. You're going to leave that open. And so I will pin that and then we'll sew it. So when I get to the arm ruffle, I'll just leave that. And then, so here I did a notch where my, I just cut a little notch and then we'll put this here. Okay, so I didn't mark mine right, so just make sure when you cut out your your pattern that you mark, make sure you do all the markings. So um, I was attaching it to this notch, but actually you're going to attach it to the marking. So I just figured out where that was, and that's where you'll start. So the notch 
is right there and you'll attach it right there. So I'll just adjust these pins. Okay, so I fixed the front, pinned that on, and now the last is the back ruffle. I'm going to gather it a little bit more. Oops. Okay, now that I have pinned the ruffle onto the bodice, we're going to sew it on. I decided to not do the straps. I'm going to do the strapless version. I just feel like it'll look really pretty in the black. So we're going to sew this on at five, or let's see. Okay, so we're actually gonna go baste this. So we'll baste it at 5 8 inch all the way across where it's pinned. Just leave the, the arm ruffles open. All right, so I will sew this and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now that you've basted your ruffle on, we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna move on to the skirt front. I have marked the darts. I clipped the top and then I have a mark where the end is. So I'm going to pin the dart. And then I'll also pin where it ends. And I'll pin this side. Okay. And then, so now we'll go sew the dart. And I will show you how I do that. And then when I sew darts, I don't do it in a perfectly straight line. I kind of curve it out towards the end so that it kind of curves with your body. And then when I get to the end, I'm going to pull this and cut the threads, pull it and cut the threads so they're longer. And then I'm going to tie a knot so I don't backstitch so that it doesn't pucker up. I tie a few knots and then I can trim it. And I'll do the other side and then we will press it. Pull it long, cut it, and then tie the other side. And then we will go press the darts in towards the center of the dress. So we'll press both in. Okay, I've pressed both darts and I've pressed them in towards the center. And you can see how nice they look because I um, tied them. They aren't like puckering. Well, when it will be when it's on the body, it will. Um, and now we're gonna repeat the dart steps for the back. Okay, I'll go sew both of these darts and press them, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, I did the darts in the back and I press the dart towards the center and now 
We're going to sew the side seams of the skirt. So we'll place it right sides together. And then we're gonna sew the side seams at 5 8 inch. And I'll do that and be right back. Okay, I've sewed this skirt back to the skirt front at both sides. And then I pressed the seams. Also, you'll want to finish the seams inside. Um, big four patterns normally don't include that in the instructions. So just make sure you finish the inside edges with a zigzag or your overlocker. Okay, now we're going to attach the bodice to the skirt. So let me grab that. Okay, so we're going to do it right sides together. And we'll just match up the seams and notches. Okay, and then we will go sew this at 5 8 inch. Okay, I sewed it on and now we're going to press this seam up towards the bodice. So I'll go press that. Okay, I pressed the seam up towards the bodice. And now we're going to work on the invisible zipper. Okay. The first step for a successful invisible zipper is we're going to open, we're going to unzip this. And you're gonna press, okay, so if you see this, you can see that the teeth are kind of curled in. You're gonna go press it with your iron open. So you'll open it flat and press it like that. Um, make sure your iron is on low so you don't melt the zipper teeth. So I'll go press this open on both sides and then we'll install it. Okay, so now I've, ironed the teeth open now i'm going to lay the dress out uh, with the back side up and i just like to do it like this so i don't mess up the zipper so i like to just lay the zipper on it like it would zip up and so then this side you know will be attached to this side and you're just going to flip this upside down. And I'm going to just make sure to align the zipper teeth with the top of the dress where this fold is. And then I'm going to pin it. And I'm going to do it so that it has a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So you'll want to measure that. But I'm going to pin the zipper. Okay, so I will go sew this side and then I'll show you how I pin the other side to match it up perfectly. Okay, so I sewed the one side on. I also used an invisible zipper foot. Um, I think that's one of the best investments you can make and they're not that much. It just, you don't have to do anything. You just sew it and the teeth go into a little guide and it sews it on perfectly. Um, if you don't have an invisible zipper foot, you're basically, so you, you ironed this down or pressed it open, you're going to stitch right along that edge as close to the zipper teeth without sewing over the zipper teeth as you can. Um, with the invisible zipper foot, the zipper teeth go into a little groove and it just sews in the right spot so you don't have to worry about it wiggling. Okay, so for the other side, what I like to do is zip up the zipper. And now I want these seams to match up. So what I'm going to do is, okay, I can't find my chalk, so I'm just going to use a pin. But what you're going to do 
is I'm going to pin on the zipper half that I zipped up exactly where that seam is. So I'll put a pin exactly where the seam is and then I'll unzip it. Be careful of the pin. And then when we're, so now, okay, so lay your dress out. And I like to just lay the zipper and then you're gonna flip it over this way so it doesn't get twisted. And first I'm going to match up this pin with the seam. And then you can pin the rest of it. Oh, whoops, I'm gonna go out a little bit. Okay, and then you'll just pin the rest and then um, I'll show you how I sew it with the invisible zipper foot. So this is an invisible zipper foot. Let me just show you it. Let's see. So underneath it has this little groove where the zipper goes into. And so you don't have to mess with where your zipper is at all. It just holds it in the groove perfectly and stitches in the right spot. And it, mine is just super easy to attach. And you just make sure to put your zipper teeth in the right spot. And it just glides over the zipper and stitches it in the perfect spot. Let's just zip it up and make sure it aligns properly. And look at that. It's pretty much perfect. It's a little off, but that doesn't bother me. I'll show you over here where there's more. Okay, so I finished the zipper. I sewed the rest of the bottom. It looks so good. And now we're going to work on the lining. We're almost done. I ran out of black interfacing, so I had to use white on this piece, but hopefully that'll be okay. You won't be able to see it. It's on the inside. We're going to do the same steps we did for the front of the bodice for the lining. So I sewed all these pieces together, pressed it, and now. Okay, one step that I realized that I messed up on after I finished the whole dress. Um, my phone wasn't recording, and I didn't get to record the step where you put the boning in. So I'm gonna show you that. Okay, so boning comes in the spiral, in the spiral thing. And it's basically when you pull it out of the casing, it's this plastic piece. You can also use zip ties, but you can get this from Joann's or where or Amazon or wherever and um yeah after this is the lining you've already finished the zipper and you've you've sewn all the lining pieces together you're going to stitch the seam allowance down um as you can see in this illustration you're going to stitch it down along the edge so that it has so that there's like a little casing that you can stick the boning inside. So each seam allowance, so these back two, you're gonna press towards the back of the bodice and you'll stitch a line and a line on the edge and then you're going to insert the boning into the seam allowance. It'll be in between the seam allowance and the main fabric. And you'll insert boning into the front seam the side seam and the back seam. 
Um, this is a really important step or else your dress won't stay up. So make sure you don't skip this step. Now we're gonna do take the facing and we're gonna sew the front to the back. Okay, so you're gonna pin the facing to the back facing to the front facing. And when you pin it, this is how it's going to look. So when you open it up, it'll be like that. All right, so I will go sew both edges at 5 8 inch. Okay, I've sewed the facings together and pressed the seams open. And now we're gonna grab the lining, the bodice lining. We're gonna match the facing with the top of the bodice. And we're gonna baste the, we'll baste the top and then we'll edge stitch the bottom. Okay, now that I have it all pinned, I'm gonna go baste along the top and then I'll edge stitch the bottom down. Um, this has a facing and a lining because the sweetheart neckline just needs a little bit more structure to stay up. So I will go sew that and then after that, we're going to press, after we sew it, we'll press the bottom edge of this bodice up by one half inch. Okay, so I edge stitched that on and basted the top. Now I'm gonna go press the bottom under by one half inch. Now we're going to attach the lining to the, the dress. Okay, so let's grab the dress. We're gonna unzip it. And put that over there. Okay, so now we're going to put it right sides together and we're going to roll the teeth. We're going to roll, so the zipper is like this when you zip it, but you're going to open it up and roll it out. So you'll just roll the teeth towards the dress and then we're going to pin the bodice. Make sure the ruffle doesn't get caught in between the bodice and the lining. Push that in. So with the zipper teeth rolled towards the dress, we'll pin it. You're going to have to push the... Let me show you. So you are going to be sewing this under edge. You're going to... You don't want to catch the um, elastics ruffle so you'll just want to make sure when you pin it you push down that ruffle and don't catch it So now that you've pinned the upper neckline and arm opening or arm underarm area, we're gonna sew that at five eighths inch, and then next we will sew the lining down to the zipper. But first, I'll go sew this neckline and show you how that looks. So I sewed the neckline. And now this is really thick because it has the facing, the ruffle, the lining, the main fabric. So it's, it's a lot of fabric. So I'm gonna trim it all the way around and then we will flip it.
Okay, so now I just wanted to make sure that laid flat. Now that you've trimmed the top, you're still gonna have it right sides together and this is where the zipper is. You're just gonna make sure the ruffle's not in the way. Where this is folded up, you're gonna keep the bottom folded up, but you're gonna sew it, you're gonna sew it down. Right where you sewed before. So I will go sew these sides down and be right back. Okay, so once you sew the lining, you can turn it to the inside, clip any corners that you need and zip it up. I have a million threads I need to trim. But now the only thing we have left to do is you want to you're going to want to hand sew or stitch in the ditch the lining to the main dress and you'll just match up the seams and you can either stitch in the ditch or hand sew it i'm going to hand sew it all right so i'll hand sew it and then i will be back to sh oh actually okay so after you sew the inside of the dress we're just going to hem it okay so you're going to do a narrow hem you're going to fold it in and fold it in again and, and so i will hem it dress. and i will be back to I show you the super finished dress, dress. 